the last people down there protesting too. They called it an unruly mob or some kind of shit like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what does it say? One big, uh... Car. Hmm. Hey, folks, welcome to the Trailer Park Show. Oh, we are yeah. here, we are live, and we're just having a blast. And, of course, we're, we, we've got an empty seat right here. It's not, we're not doing the empty chair program here, but we've got a special... Uh, we've got one of our uh, uh, regular hosts here uh, that's going to be coming on shortly. Can you read that? <laughs> National Skill Choice Today Week. Today is National Choice School Week. School Choice Week. And they had a rally today at the state capitol at 1.30, and I happened to drop by. They Come had, on in here. Uh, members from uh, students from different charter schools. We even had students that are uh, taking public schools. What are you going to do? Come in all, all the headlights? Or uh, online. All the table marking here? Yeah. Home school. It's good all that. Uh, all kinds of uh, different ways of uh, attaining your education. And uh, so they had uh, students testify, give testimony to those experiences. And uh, our friend uh, Laura was there. That's uh, good. From that organization of... Uh, Dr. Laura Preston? No, no. no uh, uh, she's Laura. a chairperson, or not chairperson. Non-schools. Non-public non schools. Non-public schools. Non-public schools, yeah, Over I think that's it. 800 non-public schools. Uh, I think she's the advocacy or lobbying arm of those schools. Yeah. And uh, she's going to be a, well, she is a member of our education summit that we're planning here in Boston. As the, uh, as that grows, you know, it's getting uh, more and more, we're getting more and more people to the table. Yeah, and it's growing now, isn't it? It is growing. We did meet with the Lieutenant Governor Dude her staff. Uh, Casey Lamb, uh, that's her education. Maybe you can bring him up on what, what, what you're talking about here. Oh, okay. We're looking at putting a uh, education summit in East Boston uh, that will enhance parent experience uh, in the um, education of their children. And we want to uh, give a, a summit where we'll talk, we can talk to parents about the different options they have in uh, Going, you know, and getting public education or educated in, in the long run. We also want to uh, educate parents on how to uh, navigate the system that the, they have their children in in regards to uh, what expectations they should have from the from the teachers uh, as they teach their students. Many of our parents are only uh, selected by the administration of each school, you know, to bake cakes and do. Uh, you know, rummer sales and garage sales, fundraisers. Will they make flies? Uh, huh? I guess the big question is, will they make right flies? Well, uh, I and, like flies. <laughs> and so there's, uh, you know, here we, we are wanting to, uh, because this yeah, is. Yeah, get it up there. All right. <laughs> this is the area in East Austin where we've had that high school that's failed for the last 15 years. You mean your alma mater? Alma Johnson mater. High, uh, East Side Memorial, whatever the go. hell they call it now. There you go. So many of the students that are in that attendance area uh, move out and either attend charter schools or attend other high schools in, East, in AISD that are academically better off than, than Johnston. So uh, that's what we're doing. We're putting it on together. And LULAC uh, is the one that uh, is uh, spearheading uh, the effort with the sponsorship and help from different groups and organizations. Uh, this also provides the... Uh, uh, school choice advocate, an opportunity to go out and educate our people about I'm that. I'm part of Cool. You know, so, you know, today, because of technology, education, and the way it's being taught has changed a totally different, it's a totally different dynamic, and it's now a, a business, and many of our current AISD organizations <coughs> are, you know, they're governments, and uh, a lot of them, uh, receive tax dollars, you know, and they receive set amount of dollars and therefore for them it's easier, you know, it's real easy to spend these these funds without very little accountability because well, they know I'm they're going to like have that them. Too. Huh? I'd like that too. That kind of money, you know what money they get? Oh yeah. And then not to have to, uh, you know, account for... <laughs> well before we continue real quick, let, let's do some real quick introductions. Uh, and then we, we can continue talking about schools because that's kind of a big thing for me as, as well. 
Uh, we've got uh, James Ritter. Yeah, we all. Well, because we've got actually some people. That, here. We've got some uh, people that are actually watching online right now that aren't from. They don't know who the hell we are. No, no, they don't. They're, they're like, who the heck is that? Old guy over there in the corner. But anyway, we got James James uh, Slow Pokey. Right? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, we got Gavino Fernandez Jr. from uh, Lulac. And yeah. District Trail Director. <laughs> exactly. And then we've got uh, Michael Cargill from uh, Central Texas Gu Central Texas Gunworks, the guy you don't want to mess around with in the dark alley. <laughs> and then of course, yeah. so <laughs> the but, Mexican wrestling bar. You know, well, Mexican wrestling I, bar, I yes. have a different one. The, the Chicano. The Chicano uh, Rush Limbaugh. The Chicano Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> Chicano Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> yep, we had that. There was a big rally at the Capitol, Right to Life. And I'd been arguing on the, online with some of uh, my libertarian friends about this Mendoza case. And we got some pictures from that. And Michael Cargill was at the gun show, which may be the last. Yeah, that's right. Uh-oh. Right. Yeah. And you made a speech last weekend at the, at the Capitol. Right. I don't get to go to any of these things anymore. But we had that speech come. Oh, I don't know if we had that speech or not, because she says, I don't know if we have audio. Oh, okay. And so I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, Andy. We had Greg Abbott's speech, too, from yesterday. Mm. But now she says we can't play audio out of her computer today. Well, so it's, there's, there's a small glitch in the, in the studio itself, but that, that's all good. We can still talk about it. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with, with doing that. And, and since we have one of the people that gave uh, one of the big speeches. Um, and then I also have another announcement I want to make also about the future of Central Texas Gunworks. Oh, okay. You want to go ahead and do that now, or? <laughs> uh, yeah, let me see. We did have, it was a big it was a big event at the Capitol with the right to life. We got pictures from both sides, too, by the way. There was, a, uh, I don't know, a couple hundred, I guess, of the, uh, uh, the pro-choice, I guess, if you want to call them that, side there. And there were just really a whole, whole bunch of uh, pro-life people there. It was, oh. Yeah, and, and you're seeing the pictures right now of, of the, uh, yeah, of the event, and that was uh, pretty. Oh, that's uh, a lot of people. That was. Yeah, it was thousands, uh, thousand or more on the pro-life side. I didn't get a chance to go to this one this year either. I mean, I'm still, I'm still remembering from last year, and that was just phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, just seeing everybody wow. there. See, there's some of the uh, trying What's to confront them. Mm. What does that say about Wendy? That's the. Uh, stand with Wendy or something like that. Yeah, no. that's the weirdos there trying to confront <laughs> the pro-life people. <laughs> It's just swallowed them up and just went around them, you know. Mm. Uh, and that was yeah, either from that was Saturday. Mm -hmm. This is Sat yeah. Saturday, was it or Saturday? It was, it was Saturday. What's the blue stuff? What are they that's, saying there? That's blue color for pro life. Oh, okay. Uh, these are from. I think these are from. Uh, Lord. Uh, Jamie Gandy. Yes. Yes, at the bottom you'll be able to see where it says from. The signs say my generation will end abortion. Oh, okay. Signs say my generation will end abortion. Nice. Yeah, these are from Jamie Gandy, and I got some more pictures from a far lefty loony. <laughs> I said, shouldn't say that about him, but he's from the other side of the aisle. How about that? Got some pictures from him, too. Yeah, I didn't make it either. I'm not going to be making a whole bunch of things. Well, we had Commissioner Gomez here last week, or what, a week before last? And I didn't pull up that tape because and, uh, we were going to play some of what she said concerning... Uh, you couldn't oh, show man, up or I you weren't here. That one. Why wasn't he here, remember? Right. Where'd I do? Oh, he was, at, he was at the gun show in, in Las Vegas. Oh, oh, that's right. You were at the shot show. Okay, the shot show. How yeah, because I wanted... Or did you lose? No, we didn't, but, win, we didn't win anything, but I wish I missed that but one. But in that discussion, she said the county did not have any power... Any power to it, prohibit or to force. Yeah, uh, the, she can't uh, make you do background checks. No, right. they can't make you do yeah. background checks. But what they can do is not offer you a contract to right. re you know to renew, right. to continue. You know, the it's gun up show. on our website. Correct. What, what it was. And what it was. She, she said there wouldn't be a problem in filling those dates. Correct. What, here, here's what, here's what it was. Last we week, talked we, about last the money. We had, uh, uh, sure, they're not going to have a problem filling those dates because they're going to have the um, what do they have the little. The little rally, the the car show, mm -hmm. where they have plenty of prostitution and and, and drugs, you know. Well, that that always draws in money. So, yeah, so they have plenty of that, and then you know, they have the the rock rally and all that good kind of stuff, and you know, so they'll, they'll yeah. Ooh la la! Yeah. <laughs> I can't take this man rock rally. There you go. <laughs> for 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 those that aren't familiar with what happened, we had uh, a, there was a contract dis dis dispute between the Saxet Gun Show and Travis County, and and the whole argument involved. Um, background checks for the people that were doing that are, that are selling the guns privately and Travis County wanted to add more more regulations than what the federal government and what the state government has 
and that would cause some issues with the owner of the sex at gun show so rather than have to uh, deal with it with a person who could be held liable for any problems that went on the, the Travis County uh, Commission has decided to not renew uh, the contract even though there has never been any problems at all at mm -hmm. the the sax at gun well, show we're, we're jumping the gun here we're still on the abortion thing we just finished that one yet oh well, well you're jumping we'll have to come back to it. let's go back. okay well let's go back well, well let's go ahead and stick around here real quick stick around here real quick and then we'll jump back around think, didn't we ask her who was kind of pushing the issue yeah what did she say the I doctor said it's natural like you start forgetting these things i mean it's not the first time the gun show was held at this facility no so was it the county attorney or was it? No, the county attorney is kind of fighting against that what part. He's like, say? he really can't do much on that part. Yeah, but who? Rose, uh, stay on the subject. All right, we're on, we're on the gun. Can we pull up Margaret? And no, we don't, have, we, don't have the, we don't have the video up right now. But no. what, it, well, what it is, is there's a group of individuals that were trying to follow through with what the county, with what the city's trying to do with this whole banning of the gun, of the gun rules or, or, or trying to add more, more stuff. To, to uh, more, uh, regulation more regulations go. that so they can't uh, do by law. Correct. Let's so get to that. as a result, you know you have you have um, those uh, who who are siding with the city who who are saying okay we can't do anything about it, even though um, Maria Gomez said there's this uh, negotiations going on on the backside. Apparently, it's not going to happen, and next month um, they have to find a new place to do the show. <laughs> and which they will. They'll take. They'll take those tax dollars. They'll take all that. The, m the fees that they get from parking, and lodging, and they'll move it to on the outskirts of Travis County and move it somewhere else. And so Travis <laughs> County will lose out on you know over a hundred thousand dollars a year. It was being held for a while up there on North Lamar, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. For a little bit. Yeah. But well, but let me ask this: uh, Could it be held at another facility that's not? The county, yeah, county it, can, owned, it, like can, it can be held at anywhere. The problem is, you know, something that's large enough where they can um, have enough parking and that they only need it three days out of the month. So if they were to go to the convention center, there'd be the same issue, do you think? The that's city? probably too expensive, too. The convention center is owned by the city. city. By the city. city. We're, we're and the city's not going to do before. that. And the city's not. It, it, it wasn't for also good. for a while at the there old county store. There he is. Right. But it, but it goes along that the same line where the city doesn't want doesn't want the sex at gun show, the county does now doesn't want the sex at gun show, uh, in their in their own facilities. Dave Null had even offered uh, doing it in Manor, mm -hmm. at one at one of the lodges, I, I believe it was one of the lodges there where they would be able to uh, make some additional accommodations. So it's a, they can find a place. It's just a matter of where they're going to do it, or if it's going to still stay within the county because I'd imagine. Williamson I, don't, I don't think the lodge. I don't know if the lodge is even big enough. Well, they were what they were thinking about doing is adding a couple of um, of um, out, outdoor mm -hmm. um, spaces, tents, or something? tents mm. for them to do to do the shows as well. So, but one of the one of the things now that's going to happen is that we're going to lose. Travis County is now going to lose or potentially lose a hundred thousand dollars a year, all because somebody wants to raise an issue or, or add more regulation on something that that this guy can't even do. Because what it boils down to is almost, I, I think it's almost $200,000 a year because they get money from parking, they get money for the actual lease itself, mm -hmm. they get a, you know, a certain, and then also you get the hotels and everything else surrounded by that. So it's actually a large amount of money. And I'm just wondering if the, the constables, the justice of the peace, and, and all those people that are paid by the county, Travis County Sheriff's Department, if they actually can afford that loss of income. Well, yeah, that all comes out of the gun show money too. Mm -hmm. Those are off-duty constables and all they hire. Mm -hmm. And I do know they also like to all go out to eat. Right. All the vendors. <laughs> well, so now so now we have an issue. And this is something that everybody has to think about. We're going to now lose money. Where is that money going to come from? And this is something that we couldn't get um, uh, Ms. Gomez to talk about, even though we kind of, I, I, we were trying to direct it where, where somebody is going to have to pay for this. And you're not going to stop people. You're not going to stop the private sale of firearms. Because right now you can do every whatever you want to on Craigslist. Mm -hmm. You know you can do whatever you want to. You can go to the Walmart parking lot and you can trans you can sell a firearm from one individual to another in Walmart, H E B. You can go to Austin City Hall in the parking lot there and sell a firearm to another individual. That's all legal. So you know the majority of people that actually sell their firearms in a gun show are gun dealers. So you, you're not gonna you're not going to stop the private sale of you firearms. You would think that they would want to keep it 
to the gun show because that's at least you can keep an eye on things. And then you have people like the the Austin police chief Art Acevedo, you know, shouldn't have any problems at all with gun shows since his police officers are the ones that are standing at the door. Mm. So if he doesn't trust his Make own police department, then you know that's his problem. <laughs> now would it be just would it just be the city or would that also be the uh, the county? Well, the uh, sheriff's office. Uh, again on the same way going on the gun on the gun show. So I, I'm still curious who pushed the county to do this, bring this up, to bring, bring this up and well, make it an issue. It's going to be uh, it's, it's going to be the Brady campaign. Yeah, uh, it they're actually called the Brady campaign, but then they changed their name to something else, and then now this year I think they're calling themselves Mom Demand Action or something like that. But essentially they were See, a few years ago, all the time. What right? Brady that? campaign. Well, the reason I mention that is because gov the the county government, being, you would think they would have more important things to be dealing with than this one particular issue. For instance, the, the 33, over 3,300 people that were killed on Texas highways in the year 2013. You'd think they would be concerned about that. Mm -hmm. But no, they're not concerned about all the people that died on the Texas highways in 2013, which well, is over 3,000. That might you know. be a state issue, not a county issue. I don't know. But, yeah, but you know, they want to focus on the gun show with no crimes have been committed in the gun show. No crimes have been committed in the gun show. Mm. I love no it. crimes <laughs> have been committed in the gun show. You can see there, it's, it's <laughs> a good show. It well, was have a good you, show with Mark So you being part of te Central uh, Texas Gun Works, uh -huh. have you heard where they're going to be moving? No. Um, well, we're looking at, they're looking at a couple different options, you know, out there. And like I said, the main thing is finding a facility that's large enough um, and enough parking where they actually can have it, you know, three days out of the month is going to be the problem. And really, they want it to be in central Austin so that, you know, because a lot of the customers in Austin, you know, want to go to the gun show. So, you know. It was packed when it was up there in North Lamar. It was packed on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Saturday was a big, was. oh, it was packed on Saturday. When they had it at the old Target down there on uh, William Cannon in 35, that was locker room. Mm. But that was, you know, you're going to rent that building out eventually. And that's, I think they only had it there like three times. So we would have to go now to San Antonio to go to the gun show. Or Cedar Park. Or Cedar Park. Cedar Park, there's a gun, it's not the Saxit, but it's someone else that does it at Cedar Park. Well, the Saxit's the big one. Right. But if you want to go to the big one, then you have to go to San Antonio just to go ahead now. Right. To um, to go ahead and, and, and purchase something there, which means now, everybody watching, consider this. We're gonna drive an hour to go to San Antonio, put take our money <laughs> to San Antonio, mm -hmm. stay there, do whatever we're gonna do, Mm -hmm. And put the money in the coffers over there as opposed to being over here. I do that now. I do that now. I mean, not to change subjects, but I do that now with this, especially since they have this Austin bag ban. You know, I purposely will go on the outskirts of Austin to the grocery store to buy my <laughs> items because I'm you not going bag, to. Huh? Yeah, because I want a plastic bag. Exactly. It, <laughs> and I uh, purposely will go you know, outside you know, of City of Austin to make sure I shop somewhere well, else. While you're on to that, we will mention that we are developing a show for early candidates for City Council. Uh oh. Yeah, but the, that was I was planning for the 17th of February, but we don't have a show on the 17th of February. That was a good jump from guns to guns. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. well, that goes for the bag man. Those <laughs> things that the future city council may, may try to yeah. to counter or, or rescind. Yeah, it's, it's just more things that the city of Austin and Travis County are doing. You know, they're going after your firearms, yeah. they're going after your individual rights, um, and it goes over to the bag ban, another one of your little individual rights, to, you know, to be able to have a, a plastic bag. And I see people that are breaking that rule now. You know, we went, I was at the store the other day, and I say, hey, whoa, you guys are giving out plastic bags at this one particular store. I'm not going to name the name. They say, yeah, well, yeah, did. we're doing it now, you know. So now people are getting tired of that. Also, it has increased shoplifting as well in Austin. So. People put shit in their pockets and forget it's there. Yeah, exactly. And, and well, you know who's going to pay for that? You're going to pay for that when you go to the cash register. Go ahead. No, I was going to say that um, so the businesses should probably unite all together and just issue them out and say, find me. Wow. You mean if they all did it at one yeah. time, you mm -hmm. couldn't do much about it. That's what I'm saying. Uh, I'm, I'm going to circle back a little bit real quick on the gun. On the gun. Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't mean uh, to drag us off there. Okay. Because he did. He took That's his okay. I, know, I, know, I, know. I apologize. Uh, I apologize. Michael apologize. Says, do you have an announcement? Yes. So I do. Go, I, I, I'm anxious to hear what's going on. I do have an announcement to make. Uh, Central Texas Gunworks starting um, on Wednesday morning. 
uh, we actually will be accepting uh, Bitcoin. So you'll be able to walk into the gun store and purchase a firearm, ammunition, um, accessories. You'll, you already, right now, on our website, can go to our website right now and purchase a concealed handgun license course, a beginning handgun class, level three private security course, level four private security course. You can buy any class right now on our website uh, by using Bitcoin. And on Wednesday, we will be accepting Bitcoin in the gun store for you to purchase a firearm and ammunition. Mm. <laughs> uh -oh, I have to buy a switch for it. Don't talk about buying things. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, sorry. We're not supposed okay, to so, talk so about so money. <laughs> I was gonna ask what the I hell is, I've well, heard well, about this Bitcoin. Asking, well we're not asking for, for, for there's no donations. Yeah. But we no, no, yeah, we're not we're, yeah, we're, we're, okay. we're not but, supposed to do that. Yeah, you'll be able to do that you Delete all that. <laughs> and then, and then, and then you can read. I guess you can read what exactly Bitcoin is. You know, I, and I keep on hearing that, but let, let's go ahead and, and, and give a, a little John bit of Bush definition. John Bush does uh, is big on this Bitcoin I'll, thing. I'll let you read that from. It, you want to read that from Wikipedia there? Yeah, from, from our from the great people at Wikipedia. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> it is a peer-to-peer -peer payment system and digital currency introduced as an open source uh, software. Hold on, stop. Peer-to-peer. Person to person. Oh, person, person to person. person. Okay. Uh, in 2009, um, and it's a uh, cryptocurrency, uh, so-called because it uses cryptology, uh, cryptoph crypt uh, cryptography. Mm -hmm. God dang these uh, things. That's okay. Yeah, that my, my El Paso education uh, to co control and, uh, to control the creation and transfer of money. Conven uh, conventionally, Bitcoin uh, capitalized uh, refers to the technology and network. Whereas lowercase Bitcoin, um, so essentially you're, right. you're just you're just being able to transfer money from one location to another. Correct. And what we want to do is we're using the Visa cards. We're trying to get right. We're trying to get away from credit card fees. We're trying to get away from PayPal. We want to eventually get away from um, uh, Square, and yeah. because those people are not allowing you know firearm dealers to use their services to sell firearms and ammunition. So we want to get away from them and want to use uh, Bitcoin instead because it's number one, it's cheaper to use mm -hmm. Bitcoin. And you know they don't have any problems with uh, firearm sales. Nice. What are your competitors now? Only takes cash because of those fees on the credit cards. Well, yeah. I'll, uh, well, yeah, you can either buy cash credit or, or check. And but I got, I got to admit that after hearing today from you know the old uh, over Christmas for Target and even Marcus, I think they lost all their customers that were using credit cards. All got stolen. Right. And, th and this now is there's even more. It turns out there's. And Bitcoin is a little more secure, you know, so you don't have to worry about getting your identity stolen, your, you know, your credit card information, as long as you, you know, you keep that, that information secret, no one can actually get that. So it's a little more secure. Uh, so that's what, another reason why we're switching to it. And I know a lot of, every time I pay for something on the computer with that credit card, I think, he's going to pick this up. <laughs> they say, oh, no, that's it's completely that's secure. Pretty, well, that's, that's actually, what Target said. That is actually pretty intriguing. Oh, my goodness. Huh. Yeah. Go ahead, Gavino. No, 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 I'm, I'm just listening. I'm we, listening. We need some Bitcoin for uh, for everything now. It, it's like the new the new trend. So so it's going to be basically replace PayPal. I, I and still don't understand how to. Is this a coin you can put in your pocket or? No, it's no. not. It's not physical money. It's, it's an electronic you know, transfer. Of, uh, it's a just think of think of it as like a barter. Yeah, system? think of it like uh, like PayPal. You know, you uh, you have you know you have Bitcoin and you yeah. purchase something. And then you can actually, you know, deposit it into your bank, ch change it over to cash, and actually deposit it into your, your your bank account and have the cash. You can change it over to cash. You can change it over to cash. So just like you know, taking for instance, taking PayPal, well, and taking what you have in PayPal and ha depositing that into the bank. Well, I think it was John Bush or one of them guys from down there, the Brady Book or something. I tried to explain to him that if the only thing I know about is trucks, if I can't buy diesel fuel, tires, brakes, or something with it, then well, industrial we, usage does it have yeah. industrial? I guess so. As more people start to d use it, yeah. and then it become more and more popular. So we are going to be the first firearm retailer, you know, in the state of Texas, that's going to do this, and we're actually the first ones in the country that's going to do it on BitPay. So, but we will be the first ones in Texas that do Bitcoin. Period. First firearm retailer. So we'll be the first ones you can legally purchase a firearm and ammunition by using Bitcoin in the state of Texas. As goes Texas, so goes the rest of the country. Nice. Well, let's see if the rest of Texas goes with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, we were the, supposed to have the Travis County judge candidates on today. Yeah. But Andy Brown 
Decided. Andrew, Andrew Brown, uh, he gave me a very polite letter, said he just way too busy. He was too busy. He hasn't been on the show before. To come on the ACTV public uh, Sarah television. Sarah Eckhart has been on before, but she and, had to back uh, out the last minute because they got important things going on. So these are your two candidates that want you to vote for them to be on your the county side. judge on the Democratic side. Uh, I would not vote Mike, for anyone Mike that does Navarro not want to. Mike will be on the show. Oh, where my calendar is? Uh, it's February. I think it's the 10th. And tomorrow, tomorrow is the uh, the state representative district 50 runoff. That's right. Ooh, yes. So if you have not voted in that election, get out there. You must live in District 50 or be a registered voter. I'm in glad to hear you 50. say that because when I went went uh, uh, mining through all the Democrat sites, they never said that. Mm. Get out to vote. Get out to vote. Everybody Look, go vote. You know why? Because they don't they don't want the Republicans to get out there and vote because they know that we have over a million pe residents in Travis County. Out of the million residents that we have in Travis County, we have over 600,000 registered voters. Out of 600,000 registered voters, only 14% voted in our last election. Mm. So they're hoping that only 14% come out and vote so they can get another Democrat in office well, or someone that's going to vote against your firearms, the, your Second Amendment rights. Senior Israel will vote against them. The polls open from 7 a.m. You be working? To 7 p.m. Nope. Uh, You're not working? No, because it's, it's only a special. It's, oh, it's, that's right. Like it's not in your... 20 precinct boxes, and they only had one mobile and like three early vote sites, and they only had four days of early vote. So, uh. Well, see, Israel would not come on here either. Oh, yeah. yeah. But Dr. Mike v uh, Vanderwally did. We and have you can a, see we, him up on. We have a pretty good batting record. Those that have appeared on the show have won recently. Yeah. Your county judge, the ones that wants to sit back and say that you cannot have the gun show, don't want to come and answer to the people, and then the one that's running for state rep is afraid to come and confront the people and yeah. answer those, those difficult questions. They yeah. want to sit and hide and run and want you to vote for them without even facing you and answer your questions at all. Well, I hope you'll be down here for when we have Mike McNamara on, because he's uh, my, our party, my, the Republican candidate. <laughs> don't vote for those cowards that don't want to come and stand in front of the people and answer those questions. Yeah. Because I have some questions for them. I want to know. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, Brought to you by And, and uh, <laughs> we always advocate, you know, uh, real heavily that uh, our, you know, folks go out there and vote. But we also want to stress that you must be an edu you should be an educated voter as mm -hmm. well, not just go out there. Like many in our community, they see Do Lloyd Doggett coming on the ballot, and it's just like seeing Jesus Christ. Yeah, mm. they vote you know, for him. They vote for him. Yet, Don't while, they you know, what policy did they like? You know, he'll, he's a, he's a good <laughs> social. <laughs> I tried to get me. You said, well, what did he do you like? He's Lloyd Doggett. What did he do? What did he do? I don't know. He's Lloyd Doggett. What does he support? I don't know. I've don't seen know people nothing. working. Uh, I've seen people at the polls that see him and want to fall on their knees and say, oh, my God. Yeah, I bet. And uh, you better let Pharaoh yeah. go because Pharaoh go got that, something for you. Let me I tell you, you know, <laughs> that Pharaoh's got somewhere to lead you. That, you better that, let him go. That comes about for of uh, because of many, many, many years of oppression, many, many years of uh, it's called slave mentality. There you go, go ahead, I'll say it for there you. you. Go. So, you know, uh, I'll say it. It's called the slave mentality. Uh, let Pharaoh go nowadays, you know. Because of the internet, everything's a little, well, it is a little bit more open, a little bit more, uh, oh. so you can't, you know, uh, it's not like the um, Clinton it's not, like the old, it's not like the old days where you can just cut up pictures and, there you go. and burn them and, and make sure no one sees them or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or those stories that were, that were found in the newspaper, you just burn, you just burn the newspapers out and it, they're all gone. Uh, <laughs> we do have some more pictures from the rally Saturday. I don't know if we're ready to go back to that or not yet. Well, let me... Let me talk a little bit about, there's, a, there's been a burning issue, well, not a burning issue, uh, uh -oh. uh, an issue of uh, Parks and Recreation, oh, they're okay. about to... Okay. Uh, they're having a meeting tonight. They have a community meeting, uh, and it's all surrounding the Holly uh, Master Plan, Edward and Lone Park Master Plan, where Mike Martinez mm. uh, pulled out $550,000 that were dedicated or going for home repairs to do this one study. There's another one. Another and, uh, let that pharaoh go. Ooh, and you know, they spent that amount of money on Hold doing on, it. Hold on, $550,000? Okay, so, $550,000. Okay, so, so okay, let's go ahead and expand a little bit on that. What exactly is this program or this this thing that's going on? Holly Street Fire Plant it's just tore down. It's a master plan for Parks and Recreation Park on the Holly Shores. 
Okay, so this is in South Austin. No, this is in, in East Austin. Are you familiar with, uh, with uh, uh, you know where the Holiday Inn stores? is? Okay, from the Holiday Inn all the way to the Longhorn Dam, that yeah. whole strip, okay. that whole part of the river. The color, I still call it. It's the all, it's all parkland through there. It's, to me, it's still the Colorado River. And, and the only thing that was on that, on that river that wasn't park was the Holly Power Plant. But now right. that's gone. Now that's gone. So the original idea was to turn that into a park. So now, uh, we went through this planning, this master plan planning phase, and the only ones that got anything out of it are obviously your consultants. And at the end of the day, the consultant. I got to get one of them kind of jobs, man. I can do that with the rubber The consultant hose came out with a master plan that calls for creating a new road within the park and doing some uh, fishing piers on the river. And at the end, of, uh, all along, all after that, you know, community meetings and dialogue and everything else, a ninety million dollar master plan. Mm. They wanna, they wanna. That, that's the, that would be the cost that they were to implement in, you know, this whole uh, concept or it's plan. It's almost, almost the same, but, amount of, same amount of money they spent on building uh, those little bike lanes in well, Austin. Well, I, I was gonna say, you know, <laughs> Parks and Rec. I mean, they can't even fix broken restrooms on Fiesta Gardens, much less, mm. you know, funding yeah, ninety million dollars. And how much money was that? Park. And he still didn't fix them. Uh, you know, a ninety million dollar master. Plan. But anyway. So they have the community all involved, all riled up over there. You know, they, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. But uh, there's going to be a public hearing uh, this Thursday at City Council at 4 p.m. Uh, our neighborhood association, East Town Lake Citizens, has taken a position against uh, rejecting the plan as it was uh, delivered by the consultants. It's too inflated. Uh, what happens with these type of public parks in minority communities, once they start fixing them up, by the time you know it, you're paying an entrance fee. Well, By the time you know it, you're paying parking. Hold on here a minute now. So, hold on here a minute now. When right. me and you were at the, the Holly Fire Plant decommissioning uh, ceremony yeah. thing, yes, sir. I asked them, is there going to be any problems? And everybody down there told me, no, yeah. we've, we've already, they're going to do just what we tell them. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, all this is blowing up. What no, the hell happened? No, 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 no. Uh, it's that at that time they were still taking. Margaret Gomez was there. Yeah, they were still taking input. Uh, there was an issue where some, uh, you know, folks that had moved into the neighborhood, they want to build a fruit, fruit farm, yeah. you know. And we were against it because of the location, and they decided to relocate and say, fine, hey, you do it over there, no problem. It don't bother me. As long as it's not bothering me, I don't want no mosquitoes and fleas all over my backyard because of these fruit farm. Well, I clearly came away with the impression that the community neighborhood associations, all that, were, were satisfying. No, that, remember when that girl spoke? Yeah. She was talking, that's what she was talking about, to go uh, rally and go to the city council make, make sure that they on don't the 30th and let good. them know that what they're proposing is... Let's see my Alzheimer's again. Yeah, what do you that, call that when they do that on the east side of Austin? They call, there's a name for that. Gentrification. Gentrification. No, that's it. no, I call it. Uh, uh, it's not gentrification. I call it. Uh, here? No, no where you, where genocide. You fight genocide. 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 <laughs> genocide. Gentrification. Genocide. That's what you call genocide. Are they going to add any commercial entities in over there? No, that's one of our biggest stands that we've had as a neighborhood. No bicycle rental or no bicycle rental. rental or no, nothing, nothing of that. Not in that part. Not in that section. We've been fighting com commercialization of that for many, many years, and we've Since been Fiesta successful. Gardens. I Since mean, the boat that? races. The boat races, yeah, Fiesta, the boat whatever races. it is. If you look, what was if that you, thing called? If you look at that strip of the shore on, on the Colorado River, it's the one that doesn't have, it has Aquafest. very little. That was it. Mm. Yeah, it has very little brick and mortar. It's probably genuine, as close to natural as you can have it. So let me make sure I understand this. What you're saying is that little land grabber, Mike Martinez, mm. um, is going on the east That's side fun. of Austin there. And basically, instead of focusing on the traffic that we're sitting on on I-35 and spending that money on relieving uh. traffic off I-35, is busy going over and taking people, you know, forcing people out and going to, you know, help these commercial companies yeah you know, move people out and build their own little businesses out, you know, on the east side of Austin is what you're saying. Or have that money gone to what it was dedicated for. Mm. So right today that, that old lady that has that home that needs weatherization cannot fill that draft anymore. And they're forcing her out and because she can't, her out. she can't pay her That's property right. taxes. They're going to say, right. well, you know what, we're going to kick you out of your home, put you in a home somewhere and let you, you know. So wow. that whole movement started with, with your... Yeah. Uh, and that's Mike Senate. Martinez, well, right? 
but all of that started with uh, Kirk Watson. So, my old friend, yeah. that's, that's and your party. It's all and, uh, part of this <laughs> whole <laughs> philosophy of you know, I, I, urbanization okay. you and in density. Area, right? Do what? You live in that area, right? Where? Where in yeah, area. he lives okay. right there. Here's what I'm going to do. Okay, and, and, and I, think, I think I can do this. That's my old friend, Kirk Watson. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, to rent your bed. I mean, your sofa. My bed? No, sorry. I'm going <laughs> to rent your sofa. I don't, I don't, I don't I'll, think I want to rent my bed. So, I'm going to sleep on your sofa. I'm going to rent a space on, on, like for that. your sofa. I don't think so either. Sorry. I kind of like beds. You know, I'm kind of partial All to right, beds. All right, anyway, go anyways, ahead. I'm going to rent a space in your house so, uh -huh. I, can, so I can sleep on the sofa. Mm. That way, I can legally run for run for uh, for that district. Oh, you can, you can. That way, if anybody, else, if if Mike Martinez decides that he wants to run in that area, oh, he's gonna run for oh, mayor. He's not guess, guess, who's gonna, guess who's gonna want to go ahead and? Well, he's it. running for mayor. So well, he's not. Oh, well, so even I, if he wanted to, I should to. even run for against him on that one. But even if he wanted to, he can He's not. He can because he's termed out. Okay. He's gonna run the for only, mayor though. The only right. I have heard that he's you, been wanting have, to run for mayor. Do you have El, 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 el Mexo, uh, Mexo Rush? Or Mexo Rush going Hispanic against... Hispanic Rush going against... Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, do, we'll yeah. do Chicano Rush versus, versus Mike well, Martinez. You know, win? come on. It's, it's interesting because, you know, we always look Para forward gente, to right uh, football <laughs> season or baseball season or basketball season. And some of us also look forward to political season, <laughs> you know, all these oh primaries yeah. and state races. You yeah. have the governor's race this year. Hey, just think about it while so you're sitting on that 35, sitting in traffic. Think about how much money they're spending on other things and not focusing on that mm -hmm. traffic. Mm -hmm. Speaking of my 35, how would you guys fix it? I would build, uh, they need to do something with that toll road and maybe make that free, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and not pay for it. And then also maybe build an upper deck all the way through downtown. No. Nope. No? Can't build an upper deck through downtown? You can't. That's the one thing I do know, is our roads literally are paved with gold. To, to fix I-35 with an existing right-of-way could cost tens of millions of dollars for like a quarter mile. Okay, what about making an upper deck to, the, tens to Mopac? Tens of millions of dollars what about Mopac? Mile. Make an upper deck to Mopac. Tens of millions of dollars for a quarter mile. For a quarter mile. Eminent domain. That's or more. Said. You know, which would, That's with an existing right away. You create the. Well, you, you so what are they talking about well, by building about something underneath 35? Because well, they're talking about doing that now. Tens of millions of well, dollars. They said they're going to do that. What about uh, re even. Well, they, I know the they. The toll road's done. Cut, not to cut you off, the toll road's done. Uh, the, the problem with I 35 is 18 wheeler. Yeah. They're coming out of Mexico and they're going to Chicago. Oh, make, they, they come from free. Canada, too, you know. Yeah. Make, and they're going to Mexico. Yeah. They could get on north of Georgetown and get off. Down there by Butte. Well, right now, if you go to Laredo, Texas, you'll see 18 wheelers parked up, what, half a mile? You know, I, trying, we've been down there. I've filmed them. Get into giant, Mexico, trying to get uh, into Mexico. How many square miles and nothing but, but 18 wheelers? But that's, that's I think that's, the, and that's already existing. And see, it's not right to put them on the toll road and make them pay a double tax because what people don't understand are, are 18 wheelers. Buck and are, half an axle. They're paying um, a tax once a year to the IRS to ride on the roads. You know, plus they're paying even more at the pumps when they go to the pumps. And then you're asking them to pay a, another tax for the toll itself. You know, so they're getting, to what yeah, they're getting tri and some triple tax. Democrats think it's actually those factories that did pay for everything. Mm. And she said, you didn't build this company? Mm. Guess what? You built more than that company. You built all the highways and everything. It's, it's, on that toll road, there's, there's these little kiosks, whatever they call it, every, every so often. Right. It's a buck and a half an axle. And so by the time an 18-wheeler gets up north of Georgetown, why bother? Just stay on 35. Right, mm. right. So if they, they, they've talked before about making special race for them, but well, they the don't o the other thing is, is uh, you know, it's us. Because it's not that fast. Because the, another Actually, factor. it's not bad. No, no traffic. And, uh, well, but see, another factor is like if you're going the wet, I mean north and there's an accident in the south, well, north will want to stop and see what's going on. And that, that in itself keeps slows down the traffic because there's times that I've been in those kind of lines and I say well what happened in this on the other side of the I'm highway? I'm thinking if they cut it by by three quarters for the toll road you might get these trucks on there. 
<laughs> well, n not only do you look at cost, it's just, uh, you're also looking at time. Is it supposed it's, to be it quicker? Take, it, yeah, because you can get right on there down by Buda. How about this? If the and city, you're off north of Georgetown. If the city can't afford to do something with the with 35, then why don't the city use that money instead of you know doing something for 35, use that money to pay for the trucks to ride on the tow road? Since they're going to make it. Oh, because they're not that's, poor. That's no, that's they, 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 that they, would they, save they, them some money. They can't do that because they're not price. poor. And they, don't vote, we, they, they want to vote Democrat. Mm. Yeah, mm. that's true. Okay, I, well, I got another radical well, idea you should think about. Well, All but, trucks use left lane. Well, but you know, right now this. there's no trucks on left lane. Let's, right. let's say you do. All, let's get say the hell out their way. That would help traffic a little bit. Let's say you better. do offer it free. It, it is open free. Uh, what happens when then the truckers still decide not to use it? Then you find them. They'll get on there. They'll get on there. <laughs> you make it free. They'll get on there. Yeah. You'll yeah. get a whole bunch of trucks on yeah. there. Mm. Because they it's, it's going to be more, it's gonna be more of, an, of an incentive, an incentive well, for them. You can to actually, if you make it free, you mm -hmm. can actually, they can actually set no trucks through downtown. It could you be have like to other, actually, other towns. Other towns do that. They <laughs> say all no, no trucks are allowed through. You have to go around, use the bypass lane. And, and you go won't around. believe So they can right make it free and force them. Yeah. Exactly, and force them to go around. Every chemical known to man has been down 35. Right. Right in the middle of downtown. And that's the capital of Texas. And that's <laughs> unheard of. And because you you can't go through uh, like D.C. you can't go through most major cities uh, with hazardous McKinnon, hazardous McKinnon, chemicals. H.C. routes go go take the. You got to take well, the loop to go around. I, I've noticed they're fixing uh, Ben White or the to the airport. Yeah. They're uh, that what is it Montopolis Drive? They're building a bridge over uh, Montopolis Drive, so that is going to help a little bit. Uh, for that route. For, for that route for that traffic because uh, right now it's. We never did get back to our abortion stuff. <laughs> what and abortion? now we're down at like 15 minutes. Well, well anyway, show the picture. Uh, show the picture. Look, he's uh, talking about something else. The people that live in or around the Holly, you know, Willow Garden area are affected by this park, and one or anyone in the city really wants to uh, go give their input. The, the Holly Monster Plan is on the website for the city of Austin, AustinTexas.gov. Uh, you can go to it, read it, and you're gonna be there tomorrow at four o'clock. What's tomorrow? Actually, City Hall tomorrow at 4 o'clock? When's this thing going on? Thursday, oh, Thursday. Thursday, Thursday. Yeah, we're seeing a little of that memory thing here live. I was at the doctor today, and that's uh, all that. He's getting Alzheimer's. That's your head, ain't it? No, that's this Thursday uh, at 4 o'clock, but that doesn't mean it'll come up at 4. Last time it was posted at 4. Excuse me. We didn't, uh, they didn't hear the, the uh, case till... 11.30 at night. Why do they do that? Do they do that on purpose? They do that on purpose. They, it's a discouraging uh, tool to make sure people don't go out there and, and critique them and, and make them accountable for what they're doing. There is a, uh, a race for the Travis County Treasurer. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, Rami Cole or Cole, uh, mm -hmm. they're fa she's facing the Cole raised some Carter money. Ortega, unless she's not, no, she is running. Mm -hmm. Who's the one that's a friends with uh, Andy Brown? I don't know, but uh, because I see when I see it, Andy Brown, right? I don't remember what this guy's name is. More that old timers, <coughs> but he puts his sign up right next to Andy Brown all the time. Remy Cole. Is that it? Remy Cole. Mm -hmm. Remy Cole. Oh, the, yeah, because he's running for treasurer. Is he friends with him, or they just uh, he puts the sign there to be cool? Mm -hmm. We do. We do need to talk some about the state side. I mean, at the at the Capitol this weekend. Because there was an interesting, yeah, let's go to circle back on that one because there was an interesting conversation that was going and on in, in, a, in a group that we were, uh, that, that we're in, well, most of us anyway, um, <laughs> uh, concerning this, the, the right to life issue. Minot's uh, family, the, the girl was brain dead, mm. and so they wanted to pull the plug on if she's pregnant. Right, so what we have right now, folks, is that um, to tie in a little bit. Um, Maybe give us some background on that. Yes, to tie in a little bit about what's going on, this past weekend we had the right to life. Uh, rally that was going on. You saw some pictures earlier uh, in the show. Hopefully you see some more. Got any more, Bob? See, I, I actually have a tough one with that one because, you know, to me, that's going to be a family decision. Right. You and know, and I, that's what I, mine I a, was. Yeah, I have a really tough one with that, with a bunch of people getting involved. You know, she she's brain dead. You know, that's going to be, I need to leave that to the family, you know, and, and what her best, because we don't know what her wishes are. And that's not my business to get involved in that that family decision. And I don't that is a family decision. Business no, it's not the government's business. That's the libertarian side of me coming out. 
So we had so what was going on with this with this uh, case that made national news uh, up in up in the Dallas area, and more particularly in the Fort Worth area, where a young lady who was 24 years old and correct me over on correct me if I'm, on what I'm what I'm about to say. Um, she had an accident at home. She ended up having what they think is, is a, um, an aneurysm in, in a, or a blood clot that ended up uh, affecting her. She was also pregnant. Mm. And at the time, I believe she was 14 weeks uh, pregnant when all this stuff occurred. Mm. Because of the aneurysm that occurred, she ended up becoming declared by the hospital and by whoever, and the doctors and whoever else were involved, brain dead. So she, but she was being uh, kept on life support because the hospital was concerned about the issue of uh, the viability of the child of the unborn child and they were concerned about a recent law about um, making sure that the uh, that the well-being of the child is taken care of while they are you know while the child while the, while the, while the woman uh, is, is injured right and what was the family wishes the family wishes wanted wanted to, eventually they wanted her her uh, to to go on to move on it tur and pull the plug. they wanted to pull the plug on her but they want, but there were some issues in regards to the legality of the purpose because the, the, the hospital was worried that if they did that, then they can face some type of legal ramification from the state. Uh, because so it wasn't the fact that the hospital was really concerned about the baby; they were just concerned about being sued. Well, yeah, yeah, that was that was a big. That was it, it's always about that. Most people are. It, most people are. If, if, you talk, if you talk to an attorney about about this whole thing, they're going to be like, "Well, it, it's all going to come down to the mighty to the mighty green dollar or the mighty green Bitcoin." Hmm. Uh, which now Central Texas Gun Works, works is going to be accepting on uh, tomorrow. Bitcoin. <laughs> so the question comes up as to, because of that whole issue, they had to go to court to decide what to do with the child and what to do with, with the life of, of the mother, who was declared dead. And this came up as a big issue with, with some right to lifers concerning whether or not you should continue the, the, the viability of the child because, you know, it, it's, it's an unborn child. And, and, and the question comes up, do you want to maintain the life of, of a potential future or do you say goodbye to both people? And at the time, they, and this is what I, what I understood, at the time that this occurred, they didn't know how well or how bad the child was going to be. So they had to maintain, the argument came up was that they had to maintain the, 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 the life of the mother so that they can determine how well the child, the child was going to be, which we later on found out the child wasn't going to be all that good. Because mm. there were some issues with the baby. Correct. Okay. And, and what it was, I think the, the issues that came up was because there might have been an issue with uh, um, oxygen and blood going to the child at the time that they, were, they, they weren't too sure, but they had to wait a, a little while. That's a family decision. To that, decide I mean, on that's, that part. Yeah, that's a it's family a tragedy, decision. It's a family decision. It's none of my business. Yeah, I don't think it's none of the government's uh, business. Not the government's business. It's but none of strong, my business. That's up to the family. That's the, one of the hardest. Some pro-life people have intervened and said, oh, it's, uh, you know. It's one of the hardest things in the world to do. Do you honestly think the family wanted to pull the plug on, on her and that baby? Do you honestly think they wanted to do that? Well, they, well, so they well, honestly were making the best. I'll put it in that, in that no, no, I, I, I understand the baby wasn't dead. We now know, know that the baby wasn't going to be right. healthy. Right. It wasn't going to be healthy. It was not. It was not going to be healthy. But they couldn't tell at the time because of, of because of the age of the baby. Mm -hmm. So for me, and, and, and this is something that we were talking about earlier, you, you come to the, to the choice where you have to, as a parent, you decide, hey, do you want to say goodbye to both, or do you want to see if you can make, if you can try to to uh, continue the legacy by it, saving one. And I know she had a written testament test uh, in her will. She had a. Uh, indicating, saying that she did not want to right. have to go through this. Right. But it was so, a DNR for her. Right. So I wonder why that didn't supersede. Because, and and here, here's, here's and what I think what, what occurred. Because it was, there was two people involved. And under Texas law, those, if, if the woman's pregnant, it's two people. Mm -hmm. So now you have to worry about the, about the well-being of the second person. So in, in spite of what the mom said, in spite of what the mom wants, you now have, you now have to deal with the life of another. I don't it, think we're going to see those other pictures. No. That's and it, it's, not, it's not easy for a, a husband to make that decision. It's not easy for a mother to make that decision about their daughter. And for them to come to that conclusion that they needed to, you know, pull the plug, you know, that had to be a very hard decision for yeah. them to make. And so we need to respect that family's decision and mind our own business. Well, we didn't get to play Greg Abbott's uh, speech. 
Are you gonna play any of those pictures or not, Ma? I think I think we're 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 uh, we're taking care of some stuff over there right now. I just got a message that they're taking care of uh, oh. some other things right now. So. Um, so Why is that obvious? <laughs> <laughs> obvious okay, never mind. We're not going to play anything. You're not going to interrupt people and keep talking about pictures, pictures, pictures. Well, kill them. So we, no. so we go. <laughs> I'm well, out with the dog. It's going to be cold tonight. Mm. Yes, we'll go there instead. Well, that's, are we finished with that? It was a tough. Some some people have played it hard right. on pro life. Here, here's here's what I what I what I was mentioning to you earlier. You know, I, I go by I go by this whole story, and, and this is kind of, and this is kind of crappy, okay. But I always go by 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 uh, the TV show Taxi. And for those that remember the TV show Taxi, there was an episode of, where Latka was going to get married to his wife, and he and and their con uh, traditional marriage. There was three questions that were asked. The last question that was asked was this. You're in an accident, and you have um, your your child and your and your uh, and your wife, who are injured, and you can only save one person out of that out of that accident. <coughs> who are you going to choose? Latka gave the answer of saying, "Well, I'm going to save my wife," which normal people did, and, and even you mentioned that to me. Yeah. And and the answer, according to that the tradition, that the, of course it's a TV show. I understand that part, but the whole argument was saying, okay, in the in the um, under their tradition, you save the child. And the reason why you save the child, because the child has an opportunity to live and, and, and have some type of life afterwards. As adults, we've already started our life, and there was an incident that occurred where we say, okay, no, we can't do it. So, the, so um, under their tradition, they couldn't get married because he chose his wife over, his, over the child who had an opportunity to, to grow and prosper. Are we going somewhere with this one? No, yes, exactly. I was so, not going. So it goes, <laughs> Hello. So it goes here's, here's what I'm trying to explain on this part. <laughs> Well, Sometimes I mean, you have to make a decision. Uh, you know, I understand where, where you have to say, okay, it's a family decision to say, okay, let's go ahead and cut, the, let's go ahead and cut ties with everything. But sometimes you have to look at the opportunity to say, okay, can I bring somebody else onto the, into this world that may yeah. be able to, to carry on and be able to say, look, we went through this great sacrifice to help you live and, you know, carry on a legacy. The family decided... But it took, it, it took the no courts. To, but it, it took the courts to go ahead and make that happen, unfortunately. And uh, and, and it's a screwed up situation. I'll, I'll, I'll guarantee you that part. And 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 you're in trouble now, Pokey. Well, no, change subject totally. <laughs> <laughs> Total change of subject. Super Bowl picks. Oh. Oh my goodness. Hey, Seattle. Uh, Denver. Oh. Denver. 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 I'm going for Denver. Ah, uh, Seattle. Denver. AFC has to go. <laughs> it has to be the AFC. Seattle's number one. Uh, Broncos is going to kick their butt. I think it'll be a pretty good game. And, and, and they're complaining about the snowball and changing the day. Excuse me. No, you Let's can't go change back the day. in time to 1976. Steelers versus Cowboys. And that was the Blizzard Bowl. Mm. And who won? That's because the Cowboys <laughs> can't play in uh, Green Bay. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? It's all about money. They don't mm. want. They don't want to have to deal with with hurting people because they were inconvenienced or because they they, oh, they froze Bruno their tickets. Bruno Mars didn't oh, want to do just the halftime it. show because of the. No. Okay, Bruno Mars, you're a badge. That's all I gotta say. And, uh, and his buddy Justin. <laughs> <laughs> Another change of subject. Well, hold on. Before you. <laughs> yeah, hold on. And uh, and your game, Ma. Uh, that was back when the Cowboys was a. Uh, Smoking all the grass and stepping all the lines, so they didn't know where so the ball was the anyway. So the Steelers. Tommy Henderson. I guess they were a team, yeah. Hey, whose <laughs> Redskins jacket is that over there? That is mine right here. Proud Redskin right here. Ah oh, man. Redskins till the end. Hail, hail, to the hail to the Redskins. Hail to the Redskins right here. I ended up talking <laughs> to you. So no pictures, huh? It's all it's all good. So so we got so no, we got a deep freeze. In about four minutes, you're gonna see some funny video. Okay. We're going to roll out with some funny Not video Not my today. dogs and cats. Excellent. The dogs versus cats. Oh, you got that is, one? Is this, is this the puppy bowl or the, the, no. the no, animal bowl? No, this is, well, never mind. You're going to like see. it. You're okay. going to like it. <laughs> All right. We can do that, I guess. So, so we've got a deep freeze coming up. Ooh, yes, tonight. Tonight. I can't remember what we got next week. Bring in your puppies. Bring in your plants. Make sure you uh, it, Make sure you uh, look into your seniors that live in your block, on your street, in your neighborhood, especially those that... That live, live in East by Austin, themselves, or? especially that live in East Austin. Oh, I see. I thought you were looking at me like, no, you know, no, no. I mean, <laughs> you don't even have like, to rubber hose up their nose. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Someone, uh, especially if they're getting forgetful nowadays. They had a, 
is it last week or this week? No, it was last week. Uh, last Thursday they had a convention at the, in San Antonio, LULAC, and it was for veterans and uh, senior citizens. And uh, oh. someone asked me if I wanted to go. And uh, yeah, said, you no. look great as shit. Well, I'll, I'll be turning 60 this year. Oh, I said, yeah. well, and I said, not really. I s they said, well, you, you need to start getting used to it. I said, <laughs> okay. <laughs> And I said, nah, I said, uh, okay, I'll go. But I'll call it a teenager's uh, <laughs> conference. <laughs> there was something else we didn't touch on tonight I wanted to. Texas Republican Assembly, uh, on my party, All right. did their endorsements this weekend up in Fort Worth. Mm. And I usually pay a lot of attention to them because that way I don't have to, you know, I usually pay more attention to all the candidates. But this year, with my increasing Alzheimer's, I guess I just kind of lost track. But they were, and I, we didn't cover any of their stuff. Yeah, we'll do that next week. Well, yeah, next, week, next week we have um, um, James Dickey from the Travis County uh, Republican Party. Yeah, I think Party. so, the third. Yes. Uh, he'll be coming in. We're still working on trying to get one, one other person uh, coming mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. And I believe we are ready for a video. It's pretty funny. So, folks, uh, we'll, okay. All right, go ahead, Dan. I don't think there's no, yeah, there is audio on it, but. You're not supposed to be able to hear the audio because we don't have audio. Funky. See if you can invite her. Yeah. On the show. Ella Wagner. You know her? Uh, we've uh, spoken before. Is any? Is, is I don't think she. I think I've already tried to get her on. She won't go. Is there a Republican running in that in that precinct? I don't know, but I'll try it again. Yeah, she. Uh, I think she was the one that was rude about not coming on. Really? I'll have to look it up on my computer because I still got, I don't know if I still got it or not. Yeah, this is pretty funny here. So did I say that out loud about they were rooting about not coming on? <laughs> well, sometimes people say, no, they're not coming on the trailer park show. And other times, they're not quite so polite about it. Uh, Andy Brown was well, extremely polite about it. Well, all we can do is offer them the opportunity to yeah. have a communication with the public through this type of venue and and Did you know you they are they are busy they have uh yeah. you know they're they're right now they're uh they're working and wanting to get elected but you know having worked for an elected official i always say you never say no to free airtime. Mm -hmm. you know that's true and and as you mentioned earlier we do got a pretty good record oh yeah oh yeah people come but on this show why i'm getting elected what we're not if, saying that we if have you, uh, if you run for office you run a campaign and you want to run it 30 second TV spot, you're talking about six, seven, eight hundred bucks. Yeah. You know, so here it's free, it's a whole hour. All you gotta do is put up with us, huh? Yeah, all you have to do is put up with us and uh I mean it's good to answer to the people though. Yeah, you know, people yeah. have questions and they want, you know, want want to hear what your opinion is and what your thoughts are on, on some of the issues. And and and, and, and when hold on, what could be better? You got Hispanic Russian Limbaugh, a black man with a gun, uh -oh. a little act. Oh. Legally, 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 yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> Man, and he's a broken down <laughs> truck driver. <laughs> well, you know, uh, again, you know, the only way to be able to answer to a lot of things, laws, and aren't they, is by going out and vote and make that change. Uh, because that's how they were created to begin with. You and know? tomorrow is election day. Tomorrow Get out and vote day, in Travis District County. 50. Vote, vote, vote. Only District 14. You have two candidates. Only 14% of registered voters come out and vote. And uh, it's interesting that the winner will have to run again, what, in two weeks? Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> Ten seconds. Uh, uh, we'll see so you later, folks. Stay warm, and we'll see you next week. Ten four, and here we go. Bye bye.